what result, and maybe we've already talked about this one, are you most proud of? Maybe not what the best that somebody, you know, it could be a cat four result for some reason. Yeah. But the thing that really like you think back on that race and you're like, man, sure, that was sure. incredible. Um, well, so it, it'll, it'll probably shock you. I'm probably not going to say Rwanda okay. um, I, I, on it. Like, even though it is probably one of my most proud moments up to year to date or from my whole career, um, it's probably one of my first stage races I did uh, when I got into cycling, because that's kind of what, you know, started my trajectory as a pro cyclist. And it was the tour of Gila back in 2016. Um, I just started racing. I just finished high school. I had maybe a month or so of training and my dad's like, Hey, we need to go to this race. Uh, like this could be very big for your career if you wanted to have one. And, um, it's in May, I think, or it has been in the past. And we're supposed to go on a senior cruise. Like I, I just graduated high school. We have like a big trip with our whole high school friends and stuff. And, and I miss it. I'm like, I want to race. Like, this is what I want to do. So I miss the ste- the big senior trip that every senior goes on at our school every year. And I uh, went down to Silver City, New Mexico with my dad. We flew into, um, I think, Albuquerque and then drove in. It's, it's pretty difficult to get to. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was just me and my dad, you know, the, the two man crew at this big five day stage race. We kind of like had our uh, we, we definitely were in over our heads a little bit. <laughs> as far as like support goes and like how he's going to feed me during the race. Um, but we made it work. He, he, you know, he finds these back roads and we'll get to the top of the climb and hand me a bottle and then he'll get in his car and just, he was like, yeah, I was going like 110 down the highway. Cause I got, I had to get to this section of the race before you guys came by and whatnot. So, uh, he's definitely been like one of my biggest supporters, but that's a different, uh, different topic. Shout out um, dad. Shout out to dad. Shout out dad. Absolutely. Um, but yes, tour of the Gila went really well for me. Spectacular. Honestly, I I was on the podium again, multiple stages finished second overall. And that was right when we had, um, Adam as my coach and he was like, wow, like you, you kind of have something here. Like I've, you have a, you had a power meter. So like he knew what my numbers were. He's like, yeah, the fifth in the fifth day on the Gila monster, like you weren't fading. In fact, you were getting stronger, which is odd for, someone that's had like two months of experience training on a bike. And he was like, all right, we got to get you in touch with so-and-so. And so, uh, you know, we had communication with Elevate KHS a few years ago or that year. And that was, you know, kind of the jump start into my cycling career is uh, he, he helped me contact the director and they, they definitely gave me a huge platform to start my cycling career. So that race is probably one of my most memorable that's amazing. And it's actually a great lead into the next question of like, what do you think in today's age it takes for somebody to become pro in the U S and hopefully go even farther and get to Europe. And it's, um, you know, I think with, and this is my own personal opinion. I think there's a lot, obvious, a lot of emphasis, obviously in the U S on crits, but I think I see, you know, athletes that become good at those but there's not really a next layer to that and it it has left some athletes a little bit disappointed i think um gravel is now huge in the u.s and i you know i don't know where that's going it's obviously not a uci part of the sport but Mm -hmm. um you've got let's say you've got a buddy who's your age you're 23 you're 23 right let's say there's a guy who's like 20 to 24 and he's like yo dude i think i'm gonna get into the cycling thing it seems like you found some success what would be some of your tips to him or her. Um, a lot of stuff that we've talked about is, is what I tell. And I do have friends like that. Actually, I recently moved to Boulder, um, last Jan or this January. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've found a really fun group of guys that I've been able to train. And some have been like, not like I'm not mentoring them, but they've definitely been asking me questions and I love to help them because, you know, there's nothing more that I want in this sport than Americans to succeed. Because when someone in America succeeds and moves to Europe, it opens the door for them looking at more Americans and then more and then more and then more. And then like, I just want people to know that like, like I want Europeans to know that, you know, there are some hitters in America. They just need to get a chance. And, you know, definitely one of the biggest things I'll say to a lot of people um, is, is consistency. You, you can't, you know, you can't expect to be good when you're out partying, when you stay up late, when you have, a lot of just throwaway days 
Um, it takes an enormous, enormous amount of discipline to get to just the Conti level alone. Um, and then you have to kind of like, okay, you can, you can be in school when you're a Conti, you can have a part-time job when you're a Conti uh, and, and Conti is continental professional, which is like the third tier professional for anyone that's wondering. Um, I know, you know, um, oh, but it's good to explain because then also people that follow, like they change it now. It's, you know, is it world team? Is it world tour? Is it pro, then there's pro team? So yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, it just takes an enormous amount of discipline to get to the level that is going to require you to be good at to get to Europe. And so definitely consistency, discipline, hard work. I mean, just the normal traits that seem so mundane. They, they're like, oh, really? It's not like you eat 2,890 calories every day and then work out 4,000 calories a day. And so now you're in a deficit and so now you lose weight and then you're better. No, that just comes with training. Uh, don't even, don't, don't stress about that. Don't, you know, I'm not a huge like food nerd about like what you should eat, what you should not eat, dieting, that kind of stuff. No, I'm not, I'm not big on that, but definitely like, you know, man, you got to hit your training days. you got to be disciplined. You can't be out late drinking. Um, and that has, oh, that alone has helped me in pretty much all of my success throughout cycling is, is those two simple things, consistency and discipline. That's really, I believe, a big part of what it takes. I love that you call it discipline because I know a lot of people are like, I make the most amazing sacrifices and I'm giving up so much. And I'm kind of like, <laughs> no, you're disciplined. You're disciplined. You're choosing to go down this path of trying to yes. be an amazing endurance athlete. And it's mm -hmm. kudos for you on that, man. It's a really good, I think, big picture view for a guy that's 23 and still relatively new to becoming a boss from the U S and dude, I, it, it's definitely going to inspire some other people out there to keep getting after no, it. I, I hope yeah. it does. Like it's, it's really like, that's, that's what lays heavy on my heart is like guys that don't feel like they can make it. Don't feel like they have the talent. You know, a lot of guys didn't think I had it. You know, I, I came from Kansas city. Like, who's from Kansas city, you know, like not a whole lot of guys in, in the pro circuit are from the Midwest alone. And to be from this small, you know, country farm town is kind of just like, it, it's just like a shock. It shocks a lot of people. And I so, you know, just to everyone out there that's wanting to make it to the next level, that's all it takes is hard work and discipline. And you know what, even to go on another layer of that for someone that's listening, that's like trying to do their, finish their first grand fondo or go from cat four to cat three, like, we've all been there when we did not believe we were good enough to get to the next level and you keep going. I'm, I never thought I would have, when I started, I was showed up in basketball shorts. If someone had said, you'll become a cat one. I was like, no way I got, when you get right. dropped from your first cat four race, it's like, I guess I'm just not fast enough. <laughs> you go back and you figure it out and you get another tip and you listen to this and you do this and you like dial this in, you keep going. And it's like, it's super inspiring, man, to hear somebody in your position, just, you make things sound so much simpler. Just stay steady to the course. Keep doing what you got to do. Believe in your process. And mm -hmm. it's not just this one big life event that's happened to you. It's been your, as you said, consistency. It's been years and years in the making. You know, every, ever since I started getting on a bike, you know, I always wanted to make it to even the level that I'm at now. And just to see the body change year after year being able to handle bigger loads of training in the fall year after year is, and then, and then racing in the spring and being like, wow, it actually, it actually works. Like this stuff actually works is just the simple, simple things can actually work. And to see them pay off, like, you know, I hope everyone that's listening, like sees that, like, I didn't do anything special, you know, like I may have gotten a really good result over the past few months, but it came from just putting my head down and training really hard through the pandemic. And that that's all, oh, that's a whole nother story in itself. You know, that's been really tough for a lot of people. And some people have come out of it on top. Some people have gotten demoralized and possibly have quit cycling. And, and I'm sorry to hear that. It's, that's a bummer because this is one of the most beautiful sports in the world. Amen to that. What's okay. So let's put this out on the internet. What's your biggest goal race? What's the race that you're like, I, I want to win that. 
um, like realistically the team that I'm on now or like, no, just, man, da- when you're 20, when you're whenever, I mean, Chris Horner, man, shout out Chris Horner was winning big races when he was 36, 37, 38. So however long it takes you to get there, what's the biggest podium that you want to step on? Oh man. I mean, like, obviously the dream is like some sort of grand tour stage win. Um, yes. I, I'm, I'm a pretty big realist. And so I don't like tell myself that I can do this when I really don't think I can. So, you know, I, de- I believe and I've got goals and I have like, you know, achievements that I want to hit, but like, I, I, I'm pretty real with what I can do and, you know, getting to the world tour is, is I believe in my reach, at least pro, pro Conti. Um, and so I would love to just be on a podium on any, really any 2.8 HC stage race, whether that's, you know, I don't know what level like tour of Swiss is. I think that's like two point pro or something like that, but a race like that, um, tour of Turkey, you know, the race that I just did to do better would be awesome. But, um, yeah, I, I don't really have like a specific race, just okay. racing on the, at the highest level that I can every single year that I'm on a better team is, I mean, well I think deep down inside, we're all hoping you just say like world champion because dude, if it gets a hilly finish and it's like, Oh my God is wait, did he really just win that? Holy crap. You know, like you never know. And it's uh, nobody has said that yet, but uh, so I think it's, Partly yeah. realistic, but also partly people don't want to put that on the internet. So sure, we'll I see. mean, well, maybe realistic, maybe not, but definitely national championships. Um, okay. You know, to, we'll ha- start to there. have that to have that jersey on my back uh, is something that I would be incredibly proud of, um, and that that would be that would be probably one of my biggest goals up to this point. That's awesome. What's is there anything that makes you nervous or a little anxious before races, um, maybe pre, or it could be like right on the line that you're just like, man, I'm feeling this, like feeling nervous. And if there is, what do you kind of do to deal with that? Um, so yeah, I, I get nervous. Um, even in small local races, you know, there's definitely like nerves there. Cause like, you know, it's, 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 it's always going to be hard. It's, you know, guys are never going to go easy on you no matter what level you're at or where you're at. Um, and to deal with those nerves, like I'm a pretty religious person, you know, I, um, I grew up in a Christian household and I, you know, I pray before the start line and, you know, I just ask God to, you know, keep me calm, keep me safe throughout the race. And uh, like pretty much every single time I I race is kind of like, that's my pre-race go-to. And, you know, I pray for my team, pray for their safety and everyone in the field racing. And it kind of just gives me a you know, a con- an, an, an inner calmness before I start the race. Um, that's, so that's awesome. I didn't expect that, but yeah, that's no, I love that, man. I actually, so I post some of these like little podcasts, like quick five, six minute ones, just things I've been thinking about. And I was talking about somebody asked me, they're like, you probably don't, I don't can't remember if it was an athlete or somebody that was emailing me and they're like, you probably don't really get nervous before races anymore. I was like, Oh dude, I'm nervous before every race. Like, what are you talking about? And they're like, but you've raced for a long time. I'm like, man, Perfect case. I went to a local race in Georgia four weeks ago, I want to say. First race since after the pandemic. And I was on the start line. I don't know a lot of these people. There's 60 dudes there. And I'm like, hard skin. I'm like, dude, chill out, man. This is like just the pre-race nerves. Like, haven't been here in over a year. You don't know who's who. Like, it's all good. Just take a couple deep breaths. And then it's like, it was actually really funny because it was uh, an 85-mile road race. But like, it started like a crit. Like I was like, wait a minute, what the hell's going on? Like people just gunned it from the, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, here we go. Let's, let's do this. And we're back. Oh, yeah. And it was, yeah, but that's, you know, I think keeping that calm and that beforehand of, uh, it's cool. That you've got something higher above you, bigger than you. That is you're asking for a little bit of like, Hey, keep, take care of the field here and let totally. us get to the end without some crazy carnage. Yeah. Man. Um, so we've got coming towards the end here. I want to, talk to you a little bit about the nutrition side of things not necessarily as you said you're not like there's no secret meal there's no this do you focus yeah. on do you carb load at all do you what do you try to do for during the races do you have anything after the race that you feel like helps you recover what's mm-hmm. um let's do pre-race like dinner or breakfast what, what's on okay. the docket um for you know pre-race for the most part will be like some sort of rice chicken and salad it seems pretty simple but it's very effective and i love it you know there's so many ways you can dress all that up 
It can be an Asian style. You can have soy sauce. You can have my favorite sriracha for everyone that's listening that knows me. Huge sriracha fan on pretty much everything I eat. <laughs> have you heard of sriracha salt? No. Dude, I was just at my sister's house and she was like, booyah, sriracha salt. And I was like, wait, what did you say? She's like, sriracha salt. And I was like, my, it's the mind blowing emoji. And I was like, oh my God. And it's, it's not as pungent or potent, I should say, as the actual sauce. So like, it's weird. It's like, you almost get like a dash of it in salt you just gotta just buy it and try it. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna find it 100 yeah i think it's just that i'm i was in north carolina i think their grocery store is just uh like food line it's got to be everywhere i'm assuming but sure. yeah so anyway sure. not to derail you there but i was no, like you're oh, good, I that. yeah you're good no I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that um so definitely that kind of stuff you know maybe sweet potato um and chicken maybe i don't know some other veggies so whatever. simple carbs and protein how do you know how much to eat until i'm full okay that's kind of like again i don't i don't count out i don't weigh out any kind of grams or liquids or whatever mm -hmm. um i i just i eat when i'm hungry and i don't eat when i'm not you know i don't overeat i don't you know binge you know i just stay healthy, eat really healthy foods, eat a lot of them after, especially after big training rides, you know, you don't want to like, you know, hold food back. Um, uh, that that's kind of like, how, yeah, I don't really like to get too specific into that stuff because it definitely comes with not myself personally, but guys that I've talked to have, you know, some bad history of like under eating and, and trying to be in a calorie deficit and then getting super sick and, and they're not healthy. And it's just, I hate hearing that because, you know, I don't know if they've got people in their ears telling them they need to lose weight, telling them they need to like be faster, be skinnier, whatever. Um, I believe your body's got a weight that it will be at. And you can obviously lose, there's definitely within a range of like how much weight you can lose. Like you can lose one kilo, two kilos and still be healthy and still, and then maintain your power. So your watts per kilos go up. Um, there's definitely a range of that, but outside of that, it's like, don't overthink it. You know, if you're training what, how hard you need to be training, I think you'll be just fine. Um, there's no reason. Keeping to it, it's the threat of Alex's keep it simple slides in nutrition. Also, yep. uh, yeah. Lauren, Lauren's 10 down was talking about that where he was like, Oh yeah, I would go and I wouldn't eat for three hours because I was like, I gotta get skinny. But then I'm realizing I'm going to a coffee stop and I'm smashing two pieces of pie not eating. And then I come home and eat all this pasta and bread. He's like, it was the dumbest thing ever. And, mm -hmm. uh, he, he had mentioned some other, oh, I can't remember who it was. It was a name that everybody knows. Um, but the guy was like, dude, I wasted eight years of my career by messing up nutrition by not eating. And he's like, I just, I wish I just ate food and wasn't scared of it and like mm -hmm. overthought it. So yeah. Yeah. It can be scary for some people. For sure. So then morning of mm -hmm. let's say the race race starts at what? 11. What do you got? Yeah, 10 or 11. Wake up, try to eat at least, I try to eat at least three hours before the race. Um, and then I eat, pro I, I mean, it's pretty religiously oatmeal, like every single morning, mm -hmm. um, even when I'm not racing, you know, okay. I'm always going to be training. Right. Uh, so, you know, oatmeal, I throw in bananas, uh, some other fruits, peanut butter for sure. Like mm. have to have peanut butter in there. And then some sort of sweet, whether it's honey, jelly, Nutella, something just sweet to, to make it tasty. Um, and, and that's about it. Yeah. What's, uh, okay. So then you're, are you drinking any carbs on the way to the race or are you pretty much, you don't seem like a big carb loading guy then. You're no. Not, okay. Not really. Like there's some guys that will drink like just packets of carbs in their drink or whatever. Um, but I'm a really simple guy you, uh, all the way from how I live my life outside of cycling all the way to how I train to how I eat. I don't really get caught up in the nuances of minute details of, of marginal gains, if that makes sense. It's, you know, I grew up with a, with my dad, you know, like always saying like, don't get caught up in that stuff. Just you need to train more. Like, it's just like more hours on the bike is going to make you faster. Obviously there's things you can eat that are good for you and things that are, that are not, but um, so far it's worked out for me, man. Like I, I don't, I don't try to get caught up in all that because that's just, that's to me, that's energy that I'm not using to like 
focusing on what I need to use. If I'm like using energy, whether it's mental energy or physical energy, trying to figure out all these tiny little things that I need to do to get better, I could be using that for training, for telling myself, for using that small little bit of mental energy to like hit that last interval that I wouldn't have hit if I was figuring out how many grams to eat for breakfast kind of thing. <laughs> dude, this is so awesome. Yeah, dude, I, I, I absolutely love that. It's, uh, and I love that because I've come from, I've tried everything from weighing to counting calories because I'm sitting now at 177 to 179 and mm-hmm. I'd always raced at like 184, 185, 186, which is like, if there's a 15 minute climb anywhere, it ain't happening. I ain't doing anything that day. Like power climb. Okay. But the weight thing, I was like, okay, I want to try and go to like tour cat skills and be better. Like I need to get stronger and get lighter. Mm -hmm. So like counting calories, weighing everything surprise, shockingly, it didn't work. And if anything, I felt like it was just so much energy of like, wait, I forgot to log that thing. And how much was in, what was in that? And how many calories that? And it's just like, there you go, man. Overthinking it, overthinking it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that there's, you know, kind of like with training, there's so much information out there. And I, I mean, I'm putting out information out there, but like, there's so much out there now that I think for someone newer, it can get so confusing so quickly. So I think our, I usually make a little image. And one of the things like streamers is be keep it simple, like train, eat healthy, be mm-hmm. consistent, like follow Alex's bullet points to succeed. <laughs> get your sleep. <laughs> get your sleep. What's the, what's, you got any sleep routines or s- sleep? What do they call it? It's not sleep health, but it's like sleep uh, hygiene. You, you mm-hmm. sleep. Sure. Sure. I, I'm like, if I could stress anything that I do for my cycling career or cycling, anything it's sleep. Um, and everyone that's listening that knows me yes. knows that I sleep a lot. I, you know, I nap every single day. Um, I try to get nine hours of sleep every single night. Um, and just being consistent with that is huge. And, you know, that's one of the biggest things I like is like, you know, ma- so like if I had a choice between doing the, using the Theragun or putting on my recovery boots or something, and it's like 930 or 10 o'clock at night, and I needed to do an hour of that, I'd be like, okay, my time is best served getting an hour more of sleep recovering when I sleep, because that's the, to me, the most natural best way of recovery is sleep. Mm -hmm. So the more sleep I get, like I tell myself, the more sleep I get, the more fresh I'm going to be for tomorrow to crush that workout, to crush that race. And that's probably one of the most important things I use my mental energy on is getting sleep. That's awesome. That will ring true for a lot of people, especially us amateurs, especially for the folks that are working a nine to five job, have a family and they're like burning the candle at both ends. And it's like, yeah, dude, the day totally. the skipping that workout to get a little bit of extra sleep so that you come back, like you're saying, to crush the actual workout mm-hmm. I'm tired every day and try and get in there and get, get on a schedule. Yeah. Last question for you. What is your, so we kind of talked about like other guys that are, uh, trying to go pro that you've talked with in Boulder, but that's not going to be most of the people listening. Most people, you know, trying to upgrade, just sure. get better. What are a couple of tips that you would give to the amateur girl or guy that's listening? It's like, we've talked about consistency. We've talked about keeping it simple. Mm-hmm. Give something else that. Um, oh, I got a great. Oh, for sure. Uh, group rides, ride in groups as much as you can. Interesting. If there's one thing I've learned, I cat it up fairly quickly, got to the got to the pro ranks and started crashing a lot because I didn't know how to handle my bike. Like truly, I was not good. Like mm. I, I had a very hard time feeling comfortable with being millimeters apart from someone going 30 miles an hour, mm-hmm. drafting them, you know, so do as many fun, casual group rides as possible, because the more you're right right next to someone and you're turning, you're turning with them and you're, and you're sprinting and you're super close to people, the more comfortable you'll get in a race. And, you know, there's all, all these different training tips you could say, or all these different, like, you know, whatever. But I think one of the most important things is getting comfortable riding next to people because that more than anything will help you cat up because whether you're the strongest guy in the field or the weakest guy in the field, you never want to waste more energy than you have to. 
And when you can save as much energy as you can and have all that for the sprint, you'll start winning races. You'll start catting up. It's not who pedals the most. It's who pedals the hardest when it really counts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So can we, would you agree with this addendum to the statement of riding groups, but riding groups, but so that it doesn't sabotage your training plan. Cause I know there's a lot of people that do like the four group rides a week. They never mm -hmm. focus on anything of their own. All they're doing is sprinting and smashing. Totally. So yeah, that's like a whole nother thing in itself. Like, okay. yeah, there are, there are guys that just do group rides and don't do any kind of training that might make you better. Um, but, but like, you know, focus on your training, get better, get your legs better, but then maybe once a week, maybe okay. twice a week. Sweet. I needed that addendum because there were going to be people like, wait a minute, Brendan, you say that you shouldn't ride three group rides a week. And Alex just told me that's all I need to do. So I was like, no, yeah, not all, not all you need to do. Okay. Not all fair, do. fair enough. For do sure. Focus on yourself. You know, I'm not, you know, well, yeah, you need to do at least one group ride a week, but definitely do your own training, get better. Um, and maybe probably another thing I'd say um, is, Let's see for guys catting up one to be cat one, um, get, get a coach, you know, like I, I honestly think that there's a lot of people that think they can do it without a coach. Um, you know, you can find cheap options. Uh, you can find reasonable options. Uh, but I, I think having a, someone to guide you in a way as to what you should do is definitely helpful. When do you For think sure. you've leaned on Adam the most or had the best, what do you think is the best thing? Um, like the, of from the having a coach. Me? Um, I think having his input on days that I'm not strong, uh, really keep me in check. You know, he, he's always there to like, be like, Alex, you've been hitting these monster rides. I'm putting this workout in for you hoping you can do it. But like, if you can't, that's fine because not many people can like, mm -hmm. you know, he really challenges me, uh, to be the absolute best I can. And when I can't hit those, you know, I reach out to him in distress and just kind of upset. And he's always there to like, you know, let me know that I'll, I'm going to be fine. Don't worry about it. So I think even having a coach, like in the mental aspect of things, uh, when you're, when you're at a higher level, I'd say cat five, four, three, uh, it, uh, it's probably not as important, mm -hmm. but for someone like myself and other guys that try are trying to do this for a living, um, you definitely have to lean on more than just yourself for the mental aspect, because again, it will drive you up a wall when you can't hit these efforts and you'll get frustrated and you'll want to quit. And it's really, really tough for sure. It's those bad days. I think even though three, fours, and fives, because somebody asked me, like, why would you have a coach when you are a coach? And Owen Shot, shout out to Owen. He always says he's a coach. He's a ripper down in Florida. And he's like, well, a surgeon doesn't operate on themselves. He's like, he's like, I have a coach. <laughs> and so I love when I have, like, it's more when I have issues going on, when I'm not hitting numbers, when I'm feeling in a funk. And it's like, mm -hmm. you've got that other person that helps you see the big picture, helps you see the, the forest. Picture. Because no sure. matter who you are, when you're the athlete, you're in there trying to crank out these workouts. You're like in the day to day. It's hard to zoom out. And mm -hmm. when you just have that other person that's like, yo, dude, deep, deep breath, like look yeah. at where you've been. You're all good. Like, or, hey, this is an issue. This is how we're going to attack it. Da, 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 da. Um, it's just keeping the everything flowing, I feel like, in the right direction. And mm -hmm. I hate doing it alone. Um me too. It's just not as fun. So uh, shout out Adam. I'll have to reach out to him and give him a uh, say what's up and maybe get him on this podcast and talk. So. Oh yeah. He's, he, he's really awesome to talk to knows a lot and Thank will you. definitely educate you awesome. <laughs> on whatever you need to know coaching wise. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Thank you for making the time to do this. This is definitely Absolutely. inspire the next wave of cyclists can inspire the current wave of cyclists. We I will hope so, all man. be rooting for you at us pro. Hope you guys have a great race and just tons of success the rest of the year. Really? And, um, what, we'll put your uh, IG handle down there and um, anything else you need to tell the people before we sign off? No, man. I'm, I'm really thankful to be on this podcast and, uh, you know, keep your heads up and keep training hard. <laughs> Dude, you're the man. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank you, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good. See ya.